to this day. Yo ho YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Chris from B. WC and I'm back at y'all with another one. If it's your first time here, you know you gotta hit that like button, hit that hit subscribe that button, button, and tune into the work. the work. This past Saturday, we had the 130 pound showdown between Manuel El Vaquero Navarrete versus Oscar Valdez in Arizona. And it was a great showdown. One of these things about this showdown that kind of left me kind of surprised was how fast Navarrete jumped on Oscar Valdez. Because we know he has a he has a herky jerky style fair. He is the definition of awkward. I think from now on when we discuss awkward fire, we have to discuss Emmanuel Navarrete, those uppercuts, those those up jabs, those side hooks on top of the head. He is a very awkward fighter, nonetheless. Good fighter has his own style, very unpredictable, something that you need in a sport like this. And I just thought that he was putting a Putting a lesson on Oscar Valdez, you know, where his jab was pumping his jab. That short uppercut was there for him all night. We see what he did to Valdez's eye, made him look like a baseball. I want to say maybe the fourth or fifth round. Yeah, some type of injury to his hand where he wasn't really throwing his hand, his right hand straight anymore. He was just, you know, using it as a lead to set up everything else. He wasn't really setting up anything with the right hand. He was just throwing it out there. But I think, man, that in total domination of how this fight was, maybe Oscar Valdez gets stopped Do if he has his right hand. The fight could have almost been stopped to the eye alone, but I think that the fight was not stopped because it was after the ninth to 10th round where the eye really began to close. So it was kind of a thing, all right, let's let him see if he doesn't take any more punishment or if it can get any worse. If it doesn't, we'll let the fight continue, and I think that's just what happened. But... Given the performance of Emmanuel Navarrete, man, an A-plus performance, you know, he beat the top guy in the division. He is now the top guy at 130, if you ask me. He needs to go and unify these belts if he wants to. He's, a, you know, he's a bad dude, man. Awkward style. He's not going to make a, he doesn't come to lay down. He's willing to trade. You know, he actually had decent footwork this fight because he's never had good footwork, but he actually was timing Oscar Valdez. Oscar Valdez had several good rounds in the second half of the fight, but it just, it wasn't enough, you know, one dimensional with the high guard and, you know, Navarrete just picked him up apart. So I don't think there's nothing that he can really do. Does this fight call for a rematch? Maybe. I would not mind seeing a rematch just because I know these guys are going to come forward and they're going to throw that leather. Valdez, you know, suffering his second loss, you know, to Shakur, from Shakur Stevenson now to Navarrete. No shame in that. I had actually Oscar Valdez. I didn't think anybody would get stopped in this fight. But once again, I also didn't think it would be a one-sided showdown. Like I said, Valdez had made it competitive three to those four rounds. But the rounds that Valdez won were you know, in dominating fashion. And even the runs that Valdez won were kind of close. Navarrete, you know, just kept his foot on the gas the whole fight. Shout out to him. Great fight. Respect to both Warriors. Definitely a great fight. Definitely candidate for fight of the year. I know some people don't like it because it was a technical and how, you know, a lot of power punches are being thrown. But this was definitely a good fight for the fans. Let me know what y'all think in the comments section below. It's your boy Chris from BWC. You know what y'all got to keep doing. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And keep tuning into the work. You know what to do. Keep it A more than 92. And I'm going to be back at y'all soon. Peace.